Welcome to The Lift with Sheila Robinson Kiss. Come on in. There's always a special place set aside for you here where you can relax, kick up your heels, pour yourself a nice refreshing drink, and prepare to be lifted and soar. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much. And welcome back to The Lift with Sheila Robinson Kiss. We have it all here on this channel. Mental health, movement, motivation, and the best relationship advice around. I welcome you back. And if you're loving what I'm doing, don't forget to subscribe and share the news of the channel with your friends and family. I absolutely love delivering these messages and information for you. Today, I want to dive right in. I got a letter uh, from Sharon, which we're going to get to momentarily. Our title, our topic for today is stop. Stop putting people in positions to disappoint you. And there's there's been a lot of that going on recently. So lean in. I have some very specific this is how-to information for you today, but let's hear from Sharon. Let me go over her letter. Uh, Dear Sheila, looking for a perspective. Up until about seven years ago, I was re reading at a first grade level. I'm 26 years old and grew up in bad circumstances. So much was missed, including school and education. I recently earned my GED. It means nothing to most people. It means everything to me. My dad has yet to congratulate me and did not come to my celebration. He has overlooked my accomplishments before, yet always tells me to do better and be more. I'm a grown woman. Why am I not past this hurt? Please help, Sharon. Okay, Sharon. <laughs> Help is on the way. Uh, help has arrived in every sense of the words. You have come to the right place today. Um, your note struck me and I want everyone to be clear. I read, generally I read uh, portions of the notes because sometimes there's very intensely personal um, elements in these notes, but I, I will tell you this. Uh, Sharon, there's pieces of what you're dealing with in my lifetime. I have had to, um, shall we say the come to Jesus <laughs> moments in terms of validation and looking for that and being disappointed. It is hurtful. And the first thing I want to say to you, it is so important that you stop judging yourself and stop beating up on yourself because it doesn't matter if you're 26, 56, 76, um, the, the respect, the admiration and the validation, uh, from a parent, most folks, um, that is something that they, it's, it's nearly instinctual. Now the problem comes in <laughs> when it becomes very clear that uh, that is just simply not available to you for, for a variety of reasons. And I just want to walk everyone through, first of all, how dangerous it can be. It doesn't have to necessarily be a parent. It could be a friend. It could be a coworker or a spouse, a romantic interest, what have you where you have given over so much of your power that their lack of approval, their lack of validation, uh, when you don't get that ticker tape parade, if you will, um, that throws you into depression, um, anxiety, uh, despondency, what have you. I'm not talking to you from a clinical perspective today. I'm talking to you uh, as a woman who 
is intimate, intimately familiar with this topic because I, I took the walk. I took the walk. I can tell you, Sharon, um, that there was really a time in my life, just because like you, um, I missed some things as well, uh, coming of age. There was not that, just that deep warmth and, 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 and validation and, and that guidance and, and, and helping me along. So it, it really created a lot of, um, programming and automatic behavior around kind of emotionally, uh, jumping up and down and then behaviors follow that, that there was just this, this, this cry, this internal cry, uh, for that because it had been missed. And I will tell you, I'm telling everyone who's listening, you, you hear me all the time on the channel. I talk about gro growing that muscle of spirituality and growing that connection with God, you know, the creator of all creation. And I would not give that recommendation and I would not be so passionate about that recommendation if I hadn't seen the power of the hand of God myself, because I called out, I raised my hand because I knew that this positioning where I had positioned far too many people, far too many people were in that spot where they could disappoint me if I didn't get the little, you know, the pat on the head or the approval or the acknowledgement. And I said, Lord, I'm totally transparent. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm on my knees at the foot of the cross. You need to give me the formula to get out of this situation because it, the, the, the circumstances and understand me were making a fool out of me and, and Sharon and everyone else. Let me explain why I can remember a uh, very uh, high moment. I was a young adult, um, just like you, Sharon, and something to me, so special and magnificent and, you know, just automatically like clockwork, uh, went to a particular person and just looking for that pat on the back, th that something, something, even though I had been disappointed many, many times and d to be dismissed would, ha that would have been something. Cause when someone is dismissive or they dismiss you, what they do is acknowledge kind of that there's something and then they're going to turn away from it, whether it's good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. I was literally met with just nothing. It was like this blank. It's almost like you're, you're going to someone and you say, Oh my God, I just baked this amazing triple layer cake. You know, it's something that I couldn't do before, but I went to my classes, tasted it's delicious. I want you to share in this joy with me and you get this nothing. And that moment cut through me for many reasons. Number one, because of who I was receiving that energy from and the, who it is, it's not important. It could have been anyone, but it was uh, a circumstance that, that really in that moment, I said, you know what? This cannot, this can't happen again. And I can't put myself in this position again. I turned away from that individual and whatever they were being affected by, because when people do that, you know, those cruel moments, um, turning away, not celebrating, not congratulating, let me be clear as clear as I can, they are being worked on. Please reference my uh, videos, Dark Influences, anything with that phrase in it, go ahead and watch it again. They are being pressed on. And I will tell you, if those dark influences cannot get to you, they will try to get to you through other people. I reference my video, Evil's Double Play. So I had that moment. And later that same day, um, I had my come to Jesus moment. And I said, I that was gross. <laughs> that is not what you have in store and in mind for me. Please give me the formula. 
so that I'm not a seeker. I'm not a craver of that pat on the back from anyone. Please give me the formula. And I started in the pray five or six days later. And you guys have heard me talk about um, spirituality and, and, and hearing things audibly. You hear it in your spirit. And what came to me and what came through through me, through the hand of God was, darling, you need a 48 hour joy hold. I got joy hold, joy hold, joy hold, 48 hours. And I understood, I understood what was being imparted to me. And I will tell you, I got with it immediately and sharing what I want to say to you, what I want you to do from now on, it is called a, a 48 hour joy hold. Anything that happens to you that is just juicy, delicious, wonderful. What I want you to do is just like you're going to marinate it in your spirit. Hold that joy. Hold that joy yourself. Create a ritual inside of your 48-hour joy hold, you know, and, and absorb it and let it wash over you and, and all the, the beauty and the joy that comes with it. Consume it in full, okay? And then after that 48 hours, after that 48 hours, if you want to share it with people who actually will enjoy that and celebrate that with you, that's fine. But the reason I'm saying I want everyone to get into that spirit of the 48 hour joy hold, particularly if you've had similar experiences as myself and Sharon, is because what it will do over time, quite naturally, is going to dissipate that automatic desire to want to rush out whether it's a specific people or a person, it's going to dissipate. When I started this practice, I said, oh, 48 hours. And what happened the first go round was after 48 hours, I felt so good. And I still had that little urge there to share. And then I said, no, 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 no. It wasn't as strong. Then something else amazing happened. The urge was there less strong. And eventually, eventually, the, the desire, the craving to get that pat on the back from these specific people or this specific person, it went away altogether. Please do not misunderstand what I'm saying. Joyful moments are designed to be shared. That's not what I'm talking about. The title of this video is getting people placed out of positions to disappoint you. And it's a true disappointment when you are in your joy and glory and you're met with crap or you're met with nothing. That's what this video is specific to. Understand when, you know, recently I had a moment, just um, a personal and a pro professional victory. I did my 48 hour ritual joy hole where I, you know, I went with my dog gizmo on the trail i got into some scriptures i took myself out to lunch i wrote in my journal i sat in my chair with my tea and just all right you go girl don't get me wrong i you know it, those moments are to be shared but i let myself experience a joy and then i threw myself uh, a wonderful little get together with some good friends of mine it's, it's, it's a, it's a formula. It is, it is a ritual that has served me well. And the, the beauty of it, the beauty of it, Sharon, and everyone else is through assist, through the hand of God, I was delivered from that. I was delivered from those moments, you see, and see, knowing something we can know it intellectually because we know a lot. I know some things. You all are brilliant. You know a lot as well. Knowing it is very different than dropping it in. And we talk about the pure execution where the wisdom meets the momentum, meets the circumstance, and then that leads to elevation. 
those those are those are very different stages. You know, we can say when we get into that elevation where something has been an issue that no longer is, see, then we are delivered deliverance. That is a joy and a celebration in and of itself. And that's what I'm talking about in this video, getting delivered from that kind of disappointment. And what you have to do is, is take people out of the positions where they can do that to you. You know, it's, 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 it's really critical, um, for, for your growth and development to, to get to the point where you are pure and clear on your mission and what you're doing and why you're doing it. And Sharon, I'm telling you right now, whatever, whatever your father left out for you, I could not be more impressed for you to raise your hand at 20 something years old and say, you know what? I, I want to read and I want to learn just that in and of itself is magnificent. But then to say, I'm going to go ahead and get my GED and you shared that you're going even further in your education. I don't know what planet your dad is on, but I think anyone hearing that is going to honor you and celebrate you in spirit. And, you know, the, the sadness for me is that in any shape, form or fashion, your father's lack of congratulations and lack of enthusiasm would pull yours down. See, that's the danger in this, everyone. When we turn over the keys of our lives and let these other people get in the driver's seat, their shortcomings, their disposition, the evil, the pettiness, the nastiness that is running through them, we put them in the driver's seat and then we start to consume it and they drive our vehicle anywhere it wants to go. So this is not passive work. This is not a passive commitment to say, you know what? I got it. I figured this sucker out. <laughs> I, this is, these are my joys. I hold them. And anyone who's not on that train, okay, so be it. But the joy is still held and celebrate it. And, and again, this is not about, you know, turning away from goodness and, and, and sharing. It's really about pure empowerment. You know, I absolutely, um, I love, you know, this work, my whole soul is in it. When there's an opportunity uh, for recognition or, you know, someone has good words to say or share, they've been elevated. Who, who doesn't love that? Who doesn't enjoy that? You know, a pat on the back is phenomenal. It's wonderful. I treasure the moments. That said, I don't look for them. I'm not searching them out. That's the difference. And nor am I walking in disappointment when those high times come, you know, those high moments, whether it be the, the birth of a baby, the purchase of a new home, the purchase of a new car, um, you know, going on in your education, growing spiritually, growing emotionally, moving into a new dwelling. These are high moments. And people who are of a high vibration, those are the ones who are in, in love and joy. You know, you go girl or you, you, you go boy. This is fantastic. Do it. Do the doggone thing. You know, that, that's where you get that pure energy. And where you don't, I'm sorry. I'm not making any apologies. Let the doorknob hit you where the good Lord split you. Those people who are being worked on by uh, influences, I have all the compassion in the world. Part of this work is in the hopes that some of those people are reached to. But sometimes the best thing that you can do for those individuals is pray for them in the way that you would want someone to pray for you. Because when someone is just that far gone, the humanity and the warmth and the kindness and the decency is not there. Th this is really out of your hands and beyond your control. So you offer them the greatest gift that you really can. That is prayer. And I've seen these individuals 
put themselves in a certain isolation because the nastiness really no one can can withstand it so they end up in states of isolation and through prayer and through the realization oh my goodness look at my life they do go on to make some changes but we don't need to subject ourselves to this nonsense and by the way there's a number of people that so when i say deal with it's to say that they're in my life and positioned in various ways because I do want to um, be a light, um, a love, a, a source of support and an example. So this said, they're there, but they're not in the interior and they're not positioned in a way where their shenanigans will affect me adversely. Now, this is the way it has to be. Everyone, It's not a one-size-fits-all. So this is part of the art and science of relationship management, if you will. You're going to need to figure out where these people are going to be placed. You know, where in your spirit, in your soul, in your psyche, where is their energy going to be placed? And a vast majority, they're going to be right out in, in the outer rings, you know, the outer orbit, you look in outer space and you see there's that interior ring and there's everything that's out in the galaxy. They're going to be out in the galaxy. I can pull you in from time to time. And I position them that way because I've also seen people who were once very disappointing. And you know what? Tell the truth, shame the devil. I know that at certain states in my evolution, I've been disappointing to people too. And as I've grown and learned I think a few of them would say, you know, she's a joy at this point. You know, we're all learning and growing. I don't position them into, let's say, the, the furthest regions, the outer regions, because people are learning and growing. And recently I had the experience where um, someone who had just been, uh, their behavior, their attitude, very disappointing. They recently resurfaced. And when they resurfaced, they did this in, in great love. And I kind of sat for a little while. I'm like, okay, well, let's see what we get going here. But there was just a consistency to it. And at this point, it's, you know, I'm a joy to them. They're a joy to me. So it's, you know, people do change. We don't want to, you know, boot them all the way out because there could be an evolutionary shift, a spiritual shift. But what I'm saying is when you learn more and you start to cherish this, this territory of your life, it just doesn't feel good um, when, when you are met with just, just pettiness, nastiness, whatever the case may be. But Sharon, in closing, I would say to you again, doesn't matter if you're 26 or 96, I want you just to forgive yourself because you're learning and growing, but there is something spiritually and psychologically wrong with your dad based on what you shared with me. I'm just telling you that. I'm not mixing words here. There is a problem with this individual and don't make it your problem because I can tell you, if you stay on this trajectory that you are on, you are going to knock the ball out of the park, continue to knock that ball out of the park. I am so delighted by your joy and by your success. I thank you for supporting this channel, everyone. I will be back very soon uh, with more great content. If you're loving what I'm doing, please don't forget to subscribe and I'll be back soon. Bye-bye.